One thing that we've talked about a little bit, you know, you talked about it earlier, you know, talk about your faith, you know, and how it keeps you motivated in a football environment and how it's helped you throughout this process of getting drafted, working your way through the NFL. You know, I know you're, you're a very religious guy. I think that's something we both share, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I really do appreciate that about your character and how you approach the game and whatnot. So kind of talk about how that you incorporate that just into this football environment. Yeah, so I mean, I'm talking about incorporating. I mean, what I had to discover was that really, if, and I don't want to be like too aggressive, somebody's watching, but like, right. um, to really believe in the Bible, to really believe in the Lord, right? Because that's what I believe in. Right. Um, it has to be a part of everything. Yeah. And like, there's nothing that you should be doing that couldn't be a part of that. Like if you're doing something that goes against that or can't be like, if God can't like sit next to you and like look at you and be cool with what you're doing, like, or like, or be happy with what you're doing. Like to me, I just don't do that. So yeah. um, when it comes with, to football, the question for everything as well as football, is just, you know, how can I do this to, um, to honor the Lord? How can I do this um, in worship to the Lord? Because I'm so grateful to be out here doing this and he provided me with this opportunity. Um, and so really that is definitely another, just another push for me to give everything that I have on the field. Um, you know, the Bible says to do everything that you do, everything that you take part in to do with your full might to do with everything that you have. Um, and when you think about it, it doesn't say that it explains it. It says like, basically this is the only life you have. There's, there's nothing, there's no more, uh, there's no more that you can do in the grave. Like this is the only opportunity you get, you know? And so it really just motivates me to like, I hear you hear so many stories about people like, you know, uh, yeah, I did this and I hurt my ankle or I didn't, I didn't learn my plays. Like I knew, I knew a guy that went to the NFL and got kicked out cause he couldn't learn his playbook. And honestly, when you get back from, from OTAs, um, if you're like doing ice bath and recovering and all that, um, you don't get back until like seven o'clock and you got to wake up at five in the morning. So do you take that three hours to like eat dinner and kind of relax? Like, cause if you want eight hours, you got to be asleep by like, what was what that? Nine. You know what I'm saying? So, so you have like a couple hours, you still have to shower. I got hair. I got to brush it. Like, you know, there's, you have to make a decision. Like, what am I going to do? And it's a tough decision to say, I'm going to study my playbook or I'm going to learn the plays for tomorrow, even though we're going to learn them before practice, I'm going to learn them tonight, or I'm going to wake up an hour early, maybe get seven hours. You know what I'm saying? Like that type of stuff is stuff that I feel like is setting me apart right now. Um, and that comes from my faith, you know what I'm saying? Seeing, um, reading the Bible and seeing the examples of people that had success, even in, 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 in the history books, you know, is, is they woke up early. They got to work immediately. They worked until the sun went down, like it's right there. And so, you know, when it comes to just talk about the TV 12 method, I'm sure that's great. Um, but what I've found is like any question to any problem, I mean, any answer to any question or any uh, solution to any problem is in the scripture and i've really found that to be true um i found that to help me in my life um whenever i decided to give uh so i'm gonna backtrack a little bit i'm sorry you asked me to, hey that's cool. that's good man that's good yeah so i mean for a long time man i grew up in the church um yeah. my grandfather's a pastor grandfather's a great guy great guy um you know and i, I worship uh, i was a worship leader in the church my whole life played the drums did all that stuff okay um and it was kind of just, I was part of a culture, you know what I'm saying? Um, I was part of just like church culture. Um, I didn't really have any uh, belief of anything. Um, I never had read the Bible. I just went to church every single Sunday, went to church sometimes on Wednesday. Um, and I just like actually didn't believe anything. And that's weird to say, but I know a lot of people like that. Like, like they, I said, I believed I had a cross on my face. I prayed for my team. Like you would have thought I was straight, you know, it was just, 
um, I didn't really have belief and understanding of what God was about. I didn't know what he asked of us. I didn't know anything, you know? And so, um, it got to a point to where I was in college and I was living a very worldly life. I was like deep in the trenches of the world. Um, I had like, you know, a lot of stuff going on. I had hurt a lot of women, um, and made a lot of mistakes. Thankfully I didn't get kicked out of the university. Um, almost did. Um, but I had just really put myself in a hole and, um, I just had seen so many poor examples of how to live uh, from some very close people to me. And I had realized I had become just like them or just like that person. And uh, I felt helpless, felt like there's nothing I could do about it. Um, you know, I had attempted suicide or attempted to attempt suicide and end up, you know, stopping. Um, and I thought that maybe that was gonna be like the rock bottom, but it still wasn't. Um, and so one day um, when I finally did hit that point in my life where everything kept running empty, um, you know, I had so many holes in my heart that I was trying to fill with things like women, uh, partying, um, attention, Instagram, likes, like football, you know, I was trying to fill uh, all my holes up with worldly things and it was never enough you know um and so finally hit rock bottom reached out to the lord um told him i wanted him in my life um went to church the next morning that was about three in the morning with the church the next morning uh at a church called get rap that my uh, cousin had been inviting me to for months mm-hmm. uh went to the service um heard a great message and up until this point i had i had asked the lord to please reveal himself to me in a way that I cannot deny him, you know, cause I'm very skeptical. I feel like I'm so smart. I feel like I just know everything. Right. Um, and so I wanted him to reveal himself in my life in a way that I couldn't deny it period at all. God was real and he cares about me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I needed that. Yeah. Um, yeah. and so at that service that day, and there had been things that happened up until that. And I just kept ignoring them cause I could find like, ah, coincidence or something yeah. but at that service that day there was something that happened to me um that it was like there's absolutely no possible way um that yeah. that this dude just like magically knows all this you know what i'm saying like um yeah and so to so briefly talk about it um i was getting prayed for after service went and, and wanted to you know join hands with somebody and um you know this person just looked at me in my face and just like pretty much said, God is telling me, um, that you need to come back here, not this place, but you need to stay in his presence. Um, he's telling me that he loves you. He cares about you. And I'm like, you know, this is general stuff. Um, but he was just saying, you know, he said that I was just like you. Um, he said, Grant, I was just like you. I was in my car crying last night. Uh, I was in my car crying at three in the morning, like you were last night. And whenever, whenever you had that feeling of loneliness and you reached out to the Lord, that's when your life began. Like, you know what I'm saying? He started saying all this specific stuff about my life. Um, and whether somebody's listening, that believes or doesn't believe if you hear that you're not, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, all this stuff is true. He knew exactly what was going on in my life. He talked about how my back flat, my back right tire of my car was flat. Like, I don't know this dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and just to find out months later, when I told somebody in the fellow, the fellowship about it, they were like, Oh yeah, no, Vinny, he's a prophet. Like God speaks to him all the time, you know? So it was like, that was just like the very first, and I gave my life to the Lord. And after that, every single thing in my life started clicking. You know, I was a special team player, never stepped on the field on defense. When I did, I messed up, didn't know what I was doing. Um, became a starter, started going crazy in football, met my wife shortly after, um, you know, uh, started getting in my word, reading my Bible, figuring out like, oh, this is actually how you're supposed to live if you believe in God, if you believe in Jesus. This is actually what you're supposed to be doing. You know, like being a Christian or being an American Christian, um, we get so like uh, complacent. Yeah, or or we just like want to watch the video and <laughs> listen to the song, and I'm listening to Mike Todd. I love Mike Todd, but there's nothing like getting in the Lord's Word and reading and seeing exactly what He has to say, 
you know, and, and I mean, I was somebody who I didn't, at one point I stopped believing in all of it before this, but I stopped believing in all of it. And I actually changed my, uh, my, all of my classes to religious studies, major classes. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to figure out what the truth was. So I looked at the Bible and I made sure that its claims were correct and that the history behind it was correct and everything backed up. So, yeah, I mean, in regards to my faith, man, it, it literally is my life. Um, it's the reason I play football. It's the reason I do anything. Um, and obviously, you know, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes all the time. Right. Um, but it's the motivation for me to give everything to this life and give everything to the Lord because he gave so much for me, you know, and he gave so much to me. You know, there was, if you, if, if the, the three years ago, me were to hear me talking about this right now, you look at me crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if, when you, when you, um, I'm sure there's a, there's an ex-girlfriend or a, or a, a high school teammate that's probably like, oh, this dude is complete BS right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, but God did all of that in me. And, and for me to say something like that to somebody who doesn't believe or that doesn't really understand, like, I'm not like making this up. Right? Like God really did that in my life. And God got me here. God told me I was going to be an NFL player when I didn't even, I wasn't even a starter in college. God told me I was gonna get drafted on March 29th of 2021 through somebody else. I got the text messages to prove it. And I started to doubt it towards the end of the draft. You know what I'm saying? But everything God has told me has come true. Everything um, the Lord has given me has been a blessing. It's been amazing. So I just try to honor him in everything. That's, you know, the reason I serve. That's the reason I try to do everything I do in the community. Um, so I got a, a nonprofit organization mm-hmm. uh, coming out soon. It's dropping soon. Just got to do the paperwork and all that. I'm doing that right now. Um, I think it's going to be called God's Timing. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the name I, I roll with. But yeah. That's awesome, man. And like, I, I relate so much to that. You know, I think a lot of young guys do. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? In terms of that kind of story of like, hey, I've made some mistakes. I've been there. You know what I mean? Or it's like, hey, I've made some mistakes. And you're at that breaking point, you know, you're like really breaking down. You're like going through some stuff. You know, I've been there. You've been there. A lot of young guys have been there. Like you said, like it's such a good motivation. It's such a good just thing to have in your life. <laughs> you know what I mean? In, in, yes. term, in terms of just looking at the word, you know, and applying it to your life. I mean, it, it's so helpful in so many ways, ways you don't even realize. You know? Yeah, and, and what I what I realize is like it's so much easier. Um, like if you're somebody who is, because I was like this, right? I was a pretender. Um, I pretended to be this. I would like would would like pray with people when they were going through something because they looked at me as like this like religious role model or something. But I had never read the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Like I I lived a worldly life, like terrible you know um i would lie to people manipulate people i would convince people into feeling bad for me when i hurt them or something you know like that's how a guy I was um but once you it's like but i was trying to pretend to be i was doing both of those things and once you put yourself holistically wholeheartedly into one thing no matter what it is it, your life becomes so much easier because that is who you are now you yeah. have decided this is where I'm going. You know, there's stuff that's happened in my family. There are, you know, there are generational things that my family just does, you know, and at some point you got to put a stick in the ground, put your sword in the ground, like, nah, it stops here with me and this is where I'm going to go, you know, and and regardless if it's your faith, if it's playing a sport, if it's at your job, whatever it is, it's like, this is the type of person I'm gonna be, it's the type of boss I'm gonna be, this type of employee I'm gonna be, it's the type of husband I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be this guy and figuring out how to do it and doing your best, you know, and that's that's, that's the same thing with, with your relationship with Christ, I believe, but it's simple. And that's what I love about it. Like, you know, God is this big complex thing. Um, and I'm glad that he's complex and I'm glad he's doing everything that he's doing, but our role is simple. It's just to follow him and give him everything. Like, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? You know? And if you're doing doing anything else, it's going to be tough. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I agree 100%, man. I really do. And and I'm happy we got to talk about this topic. You know what I mean? Because that's that's awesome that you have that openness to say, hey, you know, let's 
like I talked about at the beginning of this question, you know, like, hey, let's talk about this. You know, you're very open with it. And mm -hmm. that's something, you know, I, I really do appreciate. You know, I'm sure a lot of other people do appreciate that as well, you know. And it's just sure. awesome to hear your story in regards to that. You know, I was going to ask you a question about, you know, like, what's your story? You know what I mean? Your mm -hmm. journey up until this point. Um, I feel like you've talked a lot about that already, you know, in terms of your story about how you've gotten here. You know what I mean? And it's it's an awesome rewarding kind of story you know what i mean in terms of like yeah i've had my struggles but now through my faith i'm here you know mm -hmm. and that's the best kind of story in my opinion you know Appreciate it. yeah and and that's just awesome 